This is formula to us, the Cartesian coordinate. If I touch anywhere on these two dimensional fields, location of the point is specified with x and y, so we know where the point exactly is. But we can also specify the location instead of x and y, but with length between the point and the center, I mean how far from the center, and degrees between the line and x-axis. We call this radius and theta here. In polar coordinate, we can specify anywhere with those two things. And if we see the x and y components, then we can specify the location with Cartesian coordinates, with x and y again. We can also indicate the x, y components like radius times cosine theta and radius times sine theta. Do you remember Sokatoa of trigonometry? If we have a triangle, which one of the angle is 90 degrees, then the sine theta is defined by opposite divided by hypotenuse. And cosine theta is defined by adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So if I transform this formula, it's a really basic um, transformation, then I get adjacent equal hypotenuse times cosine theta which means x component equal radius times cosine theta. Similarly, we get opposite equal hypotenuse times sine theta, which means y component equal radius times sine theta. This is crucial because every P5 functions that draw shapes like ellipse, points, rect, those require Cartesian value so that eventually we need to convert the radius and the sine theta in polar coordinate to x, y in Cartesian coordinate. Alright, did you get that? Then let's actually implement some visual stuff with polar coordinate. This is a blank file I'm gonna use, but I set some properties before. First, I changed the angle mode to degrees to make it easy to get in. In default, it's radians mode, like pi, 2 pi, pi divided by 2, like that. And I reposition the origin of the canvas from top left to the center, for convenience. Then I set stroke and fill to my favorite color. Oh, um, at here, this is actually JavaScript native stuff. I put some shadow effect with this. Alright, so let's actually coding. Um, first, we're gonna line up several points on surface of a circle using polar coordinate. Alright, I set every 30 degrees in 0 to 360, and since P5 functions require Cartesian coordinate value, I converted radius and theta to xy, like I mentioned before. Alright, so let's run it once. Alright, good. We succeed to implement polar coordinate. Yeah, that's pretty easy, right? So from now on, until the end of this video, we play and mess around based on this basic model. Okay? Um, so, what do I do next? Or maybe uh, change this density density by mouse value. Yeah, let's do that. Hmm, interesting. Or set offset to here to um, to this angle to make rotation effect. Oh yeah, that's fun, right? If we connect those points with lines, then we get polygon. this. Mm, beautiful. 
Oh, um, in case you don't know, this is a P5 function to draw vector shape by connecting multiple vertex. What if I replace this radius with theta? What it looks like? I change some properties. Whoa, a spiral showed up. Oh, look at this beautiful shape. Yeah, actually, this figure is known as Archimedean Spiral. We see this shape as every point, as uh, degrees get bigger, the radius is also get bigger, because now we have theta value at radius. But I put 0 0.1 here, gonna be much better. Yeah. And if I add some decent amount of value, for now I add 200. Then, of course, the minimum radius got bigger. Oh, let's make it mouse interactive. I map mouse X to A and mouse Y to V. That's interesting, right? It looks very organic. Well, some people might might find it's a bit disgusting. If so, um, sorry for that. Okay, I returned it to the basic model. So now next, what are we gonna do? Oh, what if I double this theta value, like times two? Hmm, interesting again. What if three and two? Oh yeah, 7 and 11, whoa, that's great, complex but beautiful, what if 10 and 10, oh we got a perfect circle again. Okay, uh, when the two numbers are identical, uh, we seems always get perfect circle. Yeah, uh, what if I map mouse location to the values? Let's do that. What do you think? You gradually like polar coordinates, isn't it? Oh, what about I add some value here instead of multiply? Hmm. Yeah, this time it's not changing the frequency, but looks kind of rotating. Looks very three-dimensional. I remove this offset for now. Okay. Uh, these are the patterns known as a Lissage curve, also known as a Lissage figure. It's highly sensitive to those two values. Actually, this ratio. But for people wondering what's going on besides, let me show you this animation. Here, there are three circles and two waves floating on the space. But actually, this circle is a research curve. But the frequency of the two waves are identical, so for now, the shape is perfect circle. Other two circles are showing oscillating movement of points on the two waves. This one is sine wave, and another one is cosine wave. But this one, the cosine wave, the x and y axes are switched. And I said like, one period of those waves is corresponding to 360 degrees of these circles. 
which means oh it's which means like while this point go around one time the wave oscillate one period okay and also you notice that yeah we see the two trigonometry in the formula but here we can see that research curve is actually consists of x component of the cosine wave and y components of this sine wave okay you see that all right so what if i multiply frequency of this sine wave by three let's see what's happened mm -hmm. yeah we got this uh, if we see the sine graph obviously the frequency becomes three times higher and because frequency and the period is inverse proportional, the period is now three times shorter, which means this point is moving three times faster than this point. Okay. So while this component oscillates, or I mean, while this x component uh, oscillates from here to go around one time to here, this y component oscillates three times. It's like one, two, three. Yeah, like this. That's why we got this figure. Okay. Well, I explained long a bit, but did you get that? I hope you got more sense. I returned it to plane polar coordinate again. I'd like to show you one more fun thing to play with polar coordinate. That's what if I put trigonometry here to the radius? Oh, hmm. It just shrunk. Okay, what if I multiply this theta by some integer? <laughs> Whoa! This is showing up. Look at the beautiful flower. Alright, let's change to 5, to 4. Hmm, okay. This is the figure known as polar rose. It appears by setting cosine or sine as radius. It's highly sensitive to those two values. When I first see this, this really blew my mind. Yeah, I hope you too. Yeah, yeah, but interestingly, when this value is even, like 6, then the number of the pedal is 2 times of the value. Whereas when the value is odd, odd number, like 5, then the number of the pedal is identical. Why? What's going on here? For people curious about this, to help you get more sense, I actually add some value at here. Mmm, look at this. It still shapes flower but looks different. Er, I make it smaller, like 100. Yeah, the pedal is no longer intersect at the center, and furthermore, the number of the pedal is now identical to this value. Uh, let's make this offset smaller, like 120. Hmm. Oh, you see that? The small pedal is showing up between large one. Let's make it mouse interactive. Some of you might realize this figure is actually just a trigonometry wave, but it's converted into polar coordinate. I show you this. This is a sine wave on Cartesian coordinate, that is y equals sine 6 times x, 
and this one is a polar rose on polar coordinate, but the radius is r equals sin 6 times theta. If I add some value to y-axis of this sine wave, then the graph simply goes up, so this part below x-axis getting shorter and shorter. And as you can see, the every other pedal of rows getting shorter too. And when the sine wave is at above or below the x-axis, the pedal of rows doesn't intersect at the center. While when a sine wave interacts with x-axis, the wave curve goes up and down alternately. That's why we see pedals showing up uh, between other pedals. And eventually, the number of the pedal is two times of this frequency value. Yeah, it's like the x-axis is shrinking in the origin point, right? Actually, that's true. There's an animation on Wikipedia showing mapping sine wave into polar coordinate. Alright, thank you guys and girls for watching this video. If it's first time you touched the polar coordinate, I hope you got some new ideas and inspirations from this video. But before I end this video, I want to mess this flower up by twisting those values. Yeah, it's really fun. I hope you try yourself once. I'll see you again in the next video.